it ain't that easy standing up here, amen? And so we celebrate them for their courage and their efforts, amen? They sung the truth, amen? The enemy will take some things to belong, but he should never be able to take your worship, your praise, your adoration of God. And you understand all that God has done for you, amen? Even the reason we are here today in celebration of resurrection, as we've been com commemorating over these last 40 days of fast and consecration, uh, just getting closer to God, amen? Getting closer to his word, remembering what he said. Because it's important that you know what he said. Because everything he said is what he's going to do, amen? And when you understand what God is doing and has done, it will cause you to worship and celebrate. Amen? Amen? And so, this morning I want to jump right into, let's go to um, Matthew 28. Matthew 28. No, I don't want to go to Matthew 28 yet. Go to Luke 24. Luke 24. Luke 24. I'm going to read this one, but I want to read it from the Passion Translation, but it's Luke 24. I'm going to use verses 1 through 12 this morning. Since very early that Sunday morning, the women made their way to the tomb carrying the spices they had prepared. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Jesus' mother, Mary. Arriving at the tomb, they discovered that the huge stone covering the entrance had been rolled away from the side, so they went to look in. But the tomb was empty. The body of Jesus was gone. They stood there stunned and perplexed. Suddenly, two men appeared above them in dazzling white robes, shining like lightning. Terrified, the women fell to the ground on their faces. Have you forgotten what he said to you while he was still in Galilee? The destiny of the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinful men, to be nailed to a cross, and on the third day rise again. And all at once, they remembered his word. Leaving the tomb, they went back with the news to the eleven and shared the testimony with the women of the women, but it made no sense. And they were unable to believe what they heard. But Peter jumped up and ran the entire distance to the tomb to see for himself. Stooping down, he looked inside and discovered it was empty. There was only the linen sheet lying there, staggered by this. He walked away wondering what it meant. The scripture says they went to prepare spices, but they were met with a question. Did you forget what he said? And that's a, here's the issue. Do you remember what he said? Well, question, what did he say? He says, in three days, I will rise Again, he said, this that must be and shall be shall not prevent me. Amen. What does that say to us today? There are things that go on and happen in all our lives, but guess what? The issue is, what did you say before it happened? What were your words concerning the matter before it started? Jesus said, some things are going to happen, but guess what? It won't keep me down. I will rise again, even if it may seem as if though it's a point of death or loss. How many of you know you can recover from a loss? Yes, yes. You can recover from a death. Right. Jesus gave us the living example that if something happens, don't fret. Right. Don't worry. What did he say? In this world, you'll have trials and tribulations. He said, but what? Be of good cheer. Why? I've already overcome them. Yes. See, at this point, Jesus said, the word that I've spoken in times past is now a revelation to you. 
Because I'm going to be the first to demonstrate to you that you can have a comeback. I'm going to be the first to demonstrate to you that you can live beyond your circumstance. Yes, yes. But you got to have a right mindset. You got to remember what I said. What he said was, and I mean, you know, see, when we start to really look at this thing of resurrection, and, and I've done a lot of teaching here lately, you got to go back and listen to it. That's why I don't like confusing the matter. That's right. I make sure that we have the accurate of understanding. This is resurrection. Right. This is when the supernatural power of God divinely intervenes into all circumstances and situations. On whose behalf? On yours. So when we really think about it, there's a song that says it's all about us. No, no, no. It's all about really you. We say it's all about Jesus, true. But when Jesus did this, he didn't do it for himself. Who did he do it for? He did it for you. Jesus stood there and said, if I want to call a legion of angels, I can get off the cross if I want to. But if I get off, you won't. So I'm going to stay here. I'm going to hang. I'm going to bleed. But I want you to understand, I will rise again. I will get up from this so that when I get up, you can get up. See, but see, here's what the world wants to do. They want to mix paganism with this to distract you from your ability, from your true power that uh, resides within you. We all go through. But you got to understand, we go through to get to. Did you hear that? We go through. So don't minimize where you are. Don't pitch a tent where you are. Know that you're going to rise from this. You're going to get up from this. You're going to overcome this. You're going to beat this. Ooh, Jesus. So when we think about this, this, this resurrection, one of the first things that we help, that helps us understand, is that the resurrection is all about hope. The resurrection is to give you hope. We look to Jesus because the Bible says he's the author and the finisher of our faith. You got to believe this to receive this. The resurrection is about hope. It is to impart hope into your life. That you can look beyond where you are. The Bible says that which is seen is temporal, but that which is eternal. Ooh, huh? See, look, you're looking for the eternal. Not the temporal. Everything that's temporal has an expiration date. Your trouble has an expiration date. Your circumstance has an expiration date. Your, your situation has an expiration date. Second thing I want to put to you is that the resurrection helps you to understand God is faithful to his promise. Huh? He promised he would rise. And he did. Yes. Huh? The Bible says all the promises of God are yes and amen. Meaning that everything God said he would do is done. Yes. It is you getting to the revelation of receiving it as done. See, when you really come into your now, and it's a whole nother minute. When you really come into your now season, that's your season you really believe. Yes. That's your season you trust beyond a shadow of of it out. The Bible says that you become fully persuaded. And you ain't looking to the left nor to the right. But your focus is fixed. Your eyes are fixed. Now, when we look at this, what else do we see in this story? The resurrection says he ain't dead. The resurrection says he's not dead. Did you hear that? He is not dead. The tomb was empty. He's not there. Peter says, all I see, watch this, is the linen that covered him. But isn't it amazing? It wasn't just left there any kind of way. Scripture says it's folded. Huh? Jesus said, when, let's watch this. 
Jesus said, when I come back and you witness this, I'm going to let you see how neat and clean I am. He folded it up. When he folded it, he signified, I will never come this way again. Watch this, watch this. Nobody folded it for him. See, that's the part of the story we missed. It. It's too deep a revelation. I ain't going into it today. But here's what you got to understand. He didn't just leave it as if though I will get. You know how it is when you don't make the bed up because you're finna get back in? <laughs> hmm? We make it up to signify I'm risen and I'll be back. Jesus folded his and said, I'm risen, but I'll never be back. I'll never be this way again. I've told you on numerous occasions, he will not go to the cross again. If you're going to get this, you got to get it now. He will not hang, bleed, and die again. The Bible says he's offered himself once and for all. So, since he's no longer dead, let me put this to you. Why then do we fear death? Why do you fear death if death could not hold him? See, I keep telling people, we got this thing of death and dying twisted. We're not to fear death as believers. Because we know death is not our end. Now the only time, and pardon how I'm going to put this, but it's just the reality. The only reason you're scared of hell is because you know you ain't right. We don't want to talk, we don't want to deal with the truth. You fear it because you're not where you need to be. You fear it because you don't believe. You fear it because you have not accepted his death, burial, and resurrection as a truth to your life. So we fear dying. But watch this. If you fear dying, you fear living. <laughs> if you fear dying, you fear living. Because he had to die so you could live. We don't want to work with it, I understand. Mm. So, the resurrection also says to us, sin no longer has power over us. Huh? Because, see, that's the tool of the enemy. But Jesus says, I defeated that. I bore that. I took on your stuff. Watch this. I took on your stuff so you could let go. But here's another issue with us. Some things we just refuse to let go. You keep holding on to what he has already destroyed. You giving life to what he has put a death to. Come on, y'all. So what did he say when he got up? All power is in my hand. But the only thing is, he didn't keep the power. He gave the power, watch this, of resurrection to you. Here's what Paul said. Lord, I want to know you in the fellowship of your suffering. In the power of your resurrection. Paul said, Jesus, teach me how to get up. Teach me how to overcome. Teach me how to walk through the valleys of the shadow of death and yet feel no evil. Why? Why? Because you're with me. Huh? You're with me in this. And if it didn't take you out, it's not possible for it to take me out. So when we start to understand this in the resurrection and we start to consume the information, it should give you great hope, great peace. But see, what the enemy wants to do in this season in our life, he wants to yet cover up the truth. Go to Matthew 28. He wanted to be covered up. Why? 
Because as long as it's covered up, you still down. You still out. You done tapped out. Matthew 28, I'm going to read this one from the Passion of Translation. Look what it says. So the chief priest called a meeting with all the religious leaders and came up with a plan. Now, again, pardon where I'm going, but the truth is the light. Who's at the meeting? Y'all ain't catching me today. I'm let you get there. You ain't got there yet. Go on, get to Matthew 28, verse 12. Look at it good. So the chief priest called a meeting with all the religious leaders. Right, right. I'm going to let it sink. You'll get it. You'll, as, we, as we used to say, I pray when you get it for midnight. <laughs> That's my prayer. Some doubt. You got to make a decision today. 
Who, who side you on? Michael sung it. You can't take my worship. But if you're in doubt and unbelief, you ain't worshiping. If you're skeptical, you ain't worshiping. The Bible says, buy the truth. Sell it not. They sold the truth for a lie. But you got to understand, the lie is a deception. And who is hurt most by this lie? You. You. Because if you still down here, there's no way for you to know anything really about him. You got to make a choice. Are you a worshiper? Or you're a doubter. See, because doubters don't worship. Doubters say it don't take all this. Y'all sing too long. Y'all praise too long. Y'all pray too long. <laughs> Get used to it. As for me and mm -hmm, this is how we do it. Huh? It's all in the book. See, why you read a book you don't believe? Right. Come on, y'all. It's just truth and life that we got to have. We need. It needs to be spoken to us. We got to get this thing down. Go to Romans 6. Romans, the sixth chapter. Pick it up in verse 7. I'm going to read this one out of the Passion as well. Romans 6, starting at verse 7. Watch this. Obviously, a dead person is incapable of sin. Obviously, a dead person is incapable of sin. And if we were co-crucified with the anointed one, we know that we shall also share in the fullness of his life. And we know that since the anointed one has been raised from the dead to die no more, his resurrection life has vanquished death and his power over him is finished. Catch this. Because he died. And he died with your sins on him. The Bible says you were co-laborers with him in this. Why? Look what the scripture said. So you could share his life. Tell your neighbor, death is not your portion. But his life. Watch this here. He said, it has power to know him is finished. For by his sacrifice, he died to sin's power once and for all. But now he lives continuously for the Father's pleasure. So let it be the same way with you. Are you living, watch this, for the Father's pleasure? Because God is pleased when you live life to the abundance as unto him. Huh? That's when Jesus couldn't stay there. He had to get up. He had to be reunited with the Father. Watch what he goes on to say. For by his sacrifice, he died to sin's power once and for all. But now he lives continuously for the Father's pleasures. Pleasure. So let it be the same with you. Since you are now joined with him, you must continually view yourself as dead. Right. See, problem with us. We got too much of what we want going on. Hmm? Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in it. Why? Because they are in the with God. God says, listen, I don't mind you having stuff, but greater than the stuff is me. Right. That's right. Huh? When you let in anything, watch what he says. He says, you shall have no other God 
before you. The Bible says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as idolatry. How long are you going to be stubborn to the truth? How long are you going to worship what you want and not what he wants? See, we, 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 we've been talking about this in, the, in this fast, giving up certain things. And for some of y'all, I don't know, God forbid, if this, if this, if this meteor, that, if, I mean, this, this what, uh, uh, yeah, meteor thing that is released and it knocks out the power, I don't know what y'all going to do without your cell phone. Because <laughs> you sleep with it, you ride with it, you can't even drive without it in your hand. You know, you just one hand in it because you got to hold it. What you gonna do without TV? Huh? See, but if you don't start preparing yourself to serve and serve Him and Him only, hmm? you won't even go to work if you leave your phone home. You gonna drive back? Hmm? Am I right about it? Now, don't lie and tell me, cause see, I can testify. I done did it. I done went back home. And I said, Lord, help me. <laughs> huh? Yeah. How does this have this much control? Right. Yeah. Yeah. As the old folk used to say, you ain't always had. Right. Right. But we live in life. It's been there all our life. Right. And the struggle is when we have to give up things. Yeah. See, sometimes we don't understand. Let's just go here for a minute. That's why sometimes, sometimes God allows certain things to be taken from us. Because when we can't let it go, he said, okay. And here's the reality. Once you lose it, you realize, I didn't have to have it. Huh? Because the worship of it was taking your peace. You couldn't afford it no way. You were just putting on for the Joneses. Huh? Two or three months later, you so glad that repo man got it? Huh? No, you're, you're laughing, but you, you, you know I'm telling the truth. Why? Because it took your peace. And God says, I'm your peace. You need me. More than you need anything else in your life. He said, so let it be the same way with you since you are joined with him. You must continually view yourselves as dead and unresponsive to sin's appeal while living daily for God's pleasure in union with Jesus, the anointed one. God says, anything that pulls you away from me was not given to you by me. Right. And then you have to, he'll, he'll put it to you, who died for you? He'll talk to you like he talked to Job. Answer me this, riddle me this. Huh? Where does the circumference of the boundary stop? How is this done? How is that done? You can't answer the question. Because you don't know. But if you spend time with me, if you get in the moment with me, I can speak to you. Huh? See, it doesn't matter whether you're, see, your, your friends are over and they don't know what they're talking about either. Then go and go here. Be mindful of those who talk to you about what they don't know what they're talking about. Huh? You better tell them what this book says. Hmm? You better tell them what he said. The answer, to, the question to them was, did you not remember what he said? And now you have proof of what he said. Now the issue is, what are you going to do? But I like what they did. The Bible said they went and found the disciples and told them, guess what? Everything he said is done. Everything he promised 
is fulfilled. Some worshiped, some doubted. Some believed the conspiracy and the lie. Others said, he is risen. He's the Messiah. Go with me to Acts 4. Acts 4. Let's pick it up in 33. Look what Acts 4 and 33 says. I'm going to read it from the Passion. It says that the apostles gave powerful testimony about the resurrection. The apostles gave what? Powerful testimony. They didn't get involved with the lie. They gave powerful testimony about the resurrection. They said, nothing about no Easter. It's in the book. Yeah. The apostles gave powerful testimonies about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great measures of grace rested on him. See, tell your neighbor, you messing with my grace. Uh, don't bring me that foolishness. You messing with my grace. Hmm? Watch this. You have to have a grace not to go along with the crowd. Because it comes down to this. Who are you seeking to please? Right. The Bible said the apostles had great grace on their life. Yeah. Why? Because they chose not to stand with a lie. Right. But preach them infallible truth. Yeah. Yeah. That if you're going to live, you're going to have to live through him. Right. If you're going to die, you're going to have to die in him. If any man. If any man seeks to live, he got to come through Christ. Yeah. No man coming to the Father except through the Son. There's no other name under heaven whereby a man can be saved except the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Who is Jesus? The one that did it all for you. Huh, baby? And died. Yeah. Innocent. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And you want to co-mingle <laughs> this day. I know you say, Paul, can you let up on that? No, I got a mandate. Mm -hmm. I got a mandate to have you look at the book. Find it in the book. You can't. The only thing you're going to see is the Son of God doing for you what you could not do for yourself. The only thing you're going to find is Jesus, who the Bible says, while you were yet sinners, hung, bled, and died. We ain't going to mix this up, y'all. If you don't get nothing right this year, get this part right. Because how you start is how you finish. If you start with the truth, you will end with it. If you start with the truth, you'll end with a harvest. But if you start with a lie, and I showed you, everybody got in on that lie. To say it was something else other than what it really was. You know why? Because they didn't want to be made of shame. But watch this. They don't care about making you ashamed. Before God. Because what does God say? If you did not me. Before me. I will deny you. Before the Father. Anybody in here can risk being denied? <laughs> I didn't think so. I didn't think so. Whew. Go to First Corinthians. And I'll be done with 1 Corinthians 6 chapter. Let's look at it. Tell your neighbor it's all in the book. Actually, listen. Okay, yeah, 1 
Let's start right there. How did you do it? I was going to read it in the past. I'm going this way now. 1 Corinthians 6. Pick it up in verse 12. Look what he says. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 12. All things are lawful unto me, but it's not expedient. In essence, you have a right to believe the lie. The question is, what will you profit from the lie? Right, right, right. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things were lawful for me, but I will not allow myself to be brought under the power of any other. Look what he said. Meats for the belly and belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Let me just stop right there. You see that? He said, ain't nothing wrong with eating. Ain't nothing wrong with your belly being full. But I'll destroy both of them. Right. Y'all ain't catching that, huh? Hmm? Meat's for the belly and belly's for the meat. But God says, watch this. I'll take both of them out. Meats for the belly, belly for meat, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. You see that? Well, you do know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So God says, watch this. We ain't finna fornicate with this life. Huh? God said, you ain't finna play me with this lie. Amen. You ain't finna pimp me with this untruth. Right. Now, either we won right. or we not. Watch this now. He says, 14, and God has both raised up the Lord and will raise up us He said, I'm the same one that raised Jesus, and I will raise you too. But I ain't going to raise you with a lie. So here's the point. Be careful what you die to. <laughs> Be careful what you die to. Because it's either the truth or the lie. Be careful what you digest. Watch this. Your body is on the line. Your life is on the line. Woo! Woo! As it says here in the, in the Passion Translation, it says, Now God who raised up our Lord from the grave will awaken and raise us up through his mighty God says, I want to raise you up. I want to set your feet on a higher plane. I want to do for you what you could not do for yourself. But we cannot commingle a lie with the truth. You cannot celebrate something else in my place. You cannot give credence to no other for what I've done. Barely, barely, it takes a lot for a man to even die for his friend. But yet, Jesus died for the whole world. Be mindful. What's your digest in this season?